I want to very much be for Christ. And he tells us that he does come to bring division. But when we are standing with his truth, it means we are divided from anything that isn't his truth. Praise be to God, Bishop. I'm grateful for your time. Can I just start by saying thank you? Thank you for your courageous witness. Thank you for defending the innocent. Thank you for defending truth itself. Thank you for being courageous in an era of cowardice. Many people are asking right now, how are you doing? How are you doing, Bishop? Well, thank you, Joe. And uh, really, by the grace of God, I'm doing well. Yeah, there are sort of questions bouncing around like popcorn popping. But, you know, I'm with the Lord. I know that I'm doing my best to speak his truth. As I've told people many times, if I'm saying something that is contrary to the deposit of faith, please correct me. But what, what's unusual is, is I seem to be getting in trouble for speaking the deposit of faith. And someone mentioned, you know, just recently, Bishop, you were asked to do a job. Now you're doing it and you're getting in trouble for it. So uh, <laughs> you have to have a sense of humor. And thankfully, I have that. Um and I'm, I'm deeply humbled by the, your expression of gratitude. I hear that a lot. And it, it just shows me that I'm doing the right thing. I don't want to really be in opposition to anyone, but I want to very much be for Christ. And he tells us that he does come to bring division. Um, and that word is, is divisive, and it... Uh, Sometimes it becomes very negative, and certainly we have to be cautious. But when we are standing with his truth, it means we are divided from that anything that isn't his truth. And sadly, that in, in our human world, that means division from people at times. But really, Joe, it's very much something that I try to keep in mind and keep in prayer is to remember God's perspective on all of us. We are all his beloved children, even the person who is promoting the, the greatest atrocity. And sadly, we see that happening. But we have to never go on the attack for the person. We do need to be strong against false messages and false so-called gospels, but always remembering the sacredness of the person that Every person, even the person that has said the worst thing about abortion or about attacking the proper reality of marriage between one man and one woman, or whatever the agenda, always remembering that when a person speaks, that's a child of God that is beloved of God. And so we have to, to pray for the conversion of hearts. And I think we always have to keep that focus because, you know, I'm just human. I'm just one guy. And it's easy to get caught up in anger and get all puffed up and righteous and just really go on the attack. And I think absolutely we need to attack false messages, but always keeping that reminder that the person, every person, even the ones that you see atrocities in the news, it's just terrible the way we see one person treating another. And then leaders doing things that we know are contrary to the truth. But all are beloved of God. And that, I don't think, is just some sort of a, a syrupy message. It's the reality. And that's how we have to operate. Uh, it took the summer of shame, 2018. It took the McCarrick scandal to finally move me off the fence. Before that, I was, very, I was very comfortable in my career. I played it very safe. So many of us are like that, Bishop. So many of us are complacent and we're comfortable. I'm not talking about just bishops and priests like yourself. I'm talking about lay folk like me. We are go along to get along. What would you say to us to move us off that fence? Well, really, Joe, I think that's the perfect question for this time. And I've often asked, just like you said, the summer of 2018 was devastating for me and for many people here in Northeast Texas and the diocese. And that's what really got me on a path of saying, I've got to speak the truth. And I don't care who gets angry about it or who opposes me or who, who tries to tell me to be quiet. Like you said, it's about, you know, it's kind of selfish for me. It's, 
it's my own personal salvation. I've, I have an obligation, especially as a bishop. My message to people would be to do everything we can. Uh, humanity, this nation, the Catholic Church, there, everything is in uh, a turmoil and, and I believe a peril. And we have to speak up and call each other to a deeper faith, to to a deeper real love, which is sacrificial love, and to to stand for the truth. And also, Joe, I think because there are so many ignoring God, denying God, denying everything that God has ever told us in his revelation, and sadly, that's even crept into the church. Um, and we have to make reparation. We have to make atonement. We have to pray and fast. All of us, like you, we two Joes, we have an obligation to do our very best to get serious, get on our knees, fast and abstain, and and do everything we can to make reparation for this sinful world, knowing that that's good for us individually, because I'm a sinner. I need to do it for myself, but we all need to do it not just for ourselves, but for each other. And I think that that is a, a basic message that I just saw from Lucia of Fatima, the, the mm. Fatima visionary that lived into old age. One interview that I saw a clip of was her saying, pray for reparation for yourself and for others. We need to call people to their knees in fasting and in reparation and and certainly doing our best to proclaim and live the truth. But humanity is in a perilous situation. A lot of people have not awakened to it, as you and I described back in 2018. That's five years ago now. This has been quite a journey. But many people, I hate to think, uh, but uh, we talk about the silent majority, but I'm afraid that the, the silent majority is still asleep in, in most basic ways. And I'm glad that many are awake. Many are saying thank you to me. And then the ones who haven't awakened are saying, would you please quit talking and just, you know, just be quiet and take care of your diocese. And I, I try to do that. But taking care of my diocese, I believe, is speaking the truth. And, and that's what's gotten me in trouble and also in the gratitude of many people. I love what you said. It really caught my attention. You said, many have been prom uh, prompted to speak out on my behalf. I appreciate the support, but I want the focus always to be on Christ alone, not me. I'm not asking for or supporting any press conferences or demonstrations like one being held in D.C. I just want people to follow Christ. I found that very inspirational. That it's not Team Strickland, it's Team Jesus. Would you say that's fair? Oh, more than fair. I, I'm glad you highlight that, Joe, because, you know, they talk, they use my name. I mean, it's I get tired of seeing my name, and it's not about me. And thankfully, the Lord has kept me from, as I've to, to tell the people, if I get stupid, tell me. If I start acting like, oh, I'm the Savior of the world, I'm not. I'm a sinner. I'm weak, but the Lord has used me to, in whatever way, like you said. It's his world. It's his church. But he did tell the disciples to go out and teach all nations and baptize and bring people to him. So if people are wandering away, I think we have to reactivate it's those original apostles and go out and we don't rebaptize. Once you're baptized, you're baptized. But we need to reignite that flame of the Holy Spirit in people's lives. What happens next? If the worst case were to happen, what happens next? Well, really, Joe, there are a lot of, like I said, questions bouncing around like popcorn. But um, what you said just before the break, I think, is something that we need to underscore. It's true for me, and I'm, I'm living it in a fairly dramatic way, that we don't know what tomorrow holds. But that's always true. And certainly that doesn't mean we walk around as, on eggshells as if, well, our, our lives could end any moment, which they could. But we certainly need to enter into life joyfully and vigorously, living and giving thanks for each day. 
but I think my experience, because many people have asked me what's going to happen, and I don't know. I want to live God's will. That I think that's what we're all called to, and that ultimately is our greatest fulfillment, even when in the short term it doesn't look like a very good plan. If it's God's will, it will allow us to flourish and to share eternity with him, and that's what it's about. I really, Joe, I don't know what my life would look like if I ultimately am de facto retired at 65 instead of 75, but I would hope, I guess I'll put it this way, and honestly, this just comes to me as I'm answering the question because I get asked a lot, but let's say I was 75 and retiring and the situation was exactly the same in the world, then I would keep going. As long as I am life and breath, I need to share the truth of Christ with respect and with understanding that, you know, right now I have very limited authority and very limited influence in the world, but I've got to speak up with the voice that I have. And so actually uh, that's an insight that helps me even in this moment to realize that If I was turning 75 in October instead of 65, then the normal course would be I'd be retired. And I would still feel an obligation to speak the truth of Christ, using my voice appropriately and respectfully, but clearly, because people need to hear the truth. And there aren't enough speaking the truth and just simply saying, no, this isn't right. This isn't according to the gospel. And I'm not going to act like it is. And, you know, I don't want to accuse anyone else. I just accuse myself. If I don't speak up, I consider myself in trouble. And, you know, uh, I guess the way I feel, Joe, is I wouldn't blame the Lord for saying, I'm very disappointed in you, Joe, if, if I don't do what I feel he's calling me to do. So what tomorrow holds, I don't know. As you mentioned, none of us do, but we presume that the Lord has given us another day. The sun is rising. We do our best. We speak his truth. We resist any false messages, and we're not cowered by those who say, just be quiet and and pretend that everything's okay, because everything's not okay. God is with us. We don't despair, but we need to speak up against the evil and the the lack of faith that is rampant in our world. So many right now are are saying, Bishop, you are being disobedient. Bishop, you you are you have you are schismatic even. They'll they're throwing all kinds of this uh, around the internet and you know shows like mine and, and all of that. <laughs> uh, they haven't said it on my show, but I'm just pointing it out to, that it's being said. So how do you respond to that? How I mean, that's that's got to hurt. That's got to be like a dagger through the heart of someone who loves Jesus and his one holy Catholic and apostolic church so much so as to defend it against the whole world, seemingly. That has to hurt a lot. What would be your response to that, Bishop Strickland? Well, I am human. It is hurtful. And it really, Joe, it makes you think, am I crazy? Have I you know, lost my mind? And some people say I am. But I know the truth, and I know that I've got to speak up. And, you know, if you get technical about the way, I mean, I've gone and looked, okay, what is schismatic? And it's separating yourself from the Petron office, from the authority of the Pope. But the situation we're in and, and what I'm speaking up about, and, and I don't accuse Pope Francis of anything. I don't know. I don't claim to know exactly what he's dealing with. I do know people that he surrounded himself with have clearly spoken heretical statements. I mean, just all kinds of things have been said in in the past five years since the McCarrick summer. And so to be schismatic, ultimately what that definition is getting at is if you're going against the vicar of Christ, then you're going against the truth. That is the underlying assumption and the definition of schismatic that is in the books. But when you have a situation where what the vicar of Christ is doing is doubtful, then I stick with Christ. 
I believe in the Petron office. I believe in the Catholic Church because I believe in Christ. So it's it's a conundrum that I don't have any handbook for. How do we handle this? But my answer is lovingly and charitably and in every positive way we can with real mercy, we stay with Christ. We pray for Pope Francis. We pray for all the cardinals in Germany or other places that have gone off the rails that aren't being pulled back on the rails as clearly as I think they should be. But that's just me and Northeast Texas. There may be (laughs) things that I don't know, but what I do know is the truth of Christ. And that's the measure of being in union with the church. Christ is the unity. No one else, no other entity, no other objective Christ. Christ is the principle of unity. I think, frankly, I'll say it. I think we as bishops have forgotten that in too many ways. It's like, oh, we need to be united. We need to be united in Jesus Christ. If we're united just as some sort of club of men, that's meaningless as far as leading the Catholic Church as vicars of Christ and as successors of the apostles. Most of them, except for John, really all of them, died for Christ. And that's the kind of apostles we have to be. It's all about Christ. Yes, with his church, because he gave us his church. And people accuse me of saying, oh, well, you sound Protestant. You're just talking about Jesus. No, to be truly Catholic is Christ first and his church deepens and brings us closer to him through word and sacraments. But it has to be Christ as Lord, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. I've tried to say that in numerous ways because it needs to be said. Christ isn't one among many. He's not, yeah, he's great, but that's how many people saw him when he walked the earth. The revelation is he is the only Lord. He is the only Son of God. And we've got to follow his truth. All the others in the world are, sometimes they have a portion of the truth, but he is truth incarnate. We see his face, we see the face of truth. Did you like that video? It's okay. You can admit it. It's perfectly fine. Hey, we cover the big stories of our day from inside the church to outside the church to all points in between. And we do it from a Catholic perspective. It's called a Catholic take. It's a radio program Monday through Friday. We live stream it right here on this channel, by the way. So make sure to subscribe, like, and share. We would be very grateful to you. And don't forget, you're going to want to watch this video right here because you don't want to miss anything.